Reverend Ayomide Ibrahim is a senior pastor of the Four Square Gospel Church, Omole Estate, Ikeja. He is also the district overseer for the Ikeja District and Ikeja Access Coordinator. A legal practitioner by profession, he is a graduate of Life Bible College in Ikorodu, Nigeria. He has also received ministry and leadership development training in Kenya, South Africa, Malaysia, and in the United States. He is authored 20 books, and he is the author of Daily Showers, a devotional manual published yearly since 2007, and which currently circulates in Nigeria, Great Britain, U.S., UAE, and other countries. He is married to Reverend Dr. Mrs. Tolulokpe Abraham, and the union is blessed with three children and six grandchildren. Restoration House, Baltimore. Make welcome Reverend Ayomide Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Jesus. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will honor you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. One more time. Oh Lord, oh Lord my God, how excellent is your name in all Father, we worship you again this morning. We thank you for this eternal privilege that we refuse to take for granted. Please accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for January 2024. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. And here we are thanking you for September. All glory be to your mighty name. It is of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. For your compassion have kept us in now. We return praises to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This hour, Father, as your word will come, please bless our souls. Amen. Keep me within the perimeter of your way. As I speak your word, let your people hear your voice. Amen. Let no one have a plastic experience in this service. Amen. Let someone take something home Amen. that will speak eternally in their life. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. For Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. God bless you. I said let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap. Let's clap. Now... Uh, uh, in the original biblical history, it is said that when you are clapping unto God, you are actually putting the head of your enemy in the middle of the two hands and you are crushing it. Praise the Lord. So whatever is opposing you, whatever is attacking your destiny, as you are clapping, they are being crushed in the name of Jesus. Sickness is crushed in Jesus' name. Condemnation is crushed in Jesus' name. Causes are crushed in Jesus' name. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I want to thank uh, the set man for this commission and his wife and the family for the great work the Lord is doing through them here. Praise the Lord. My time is very short, so my compliments will not be too long. But I want to bless God. Uh, anybody that ha has the eyes of the spirit will enter this place and see greatness. And because largeness proceeds from greatness, this is a great church. This is a large church. Very soon, this place shall not continue. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere I go, I look for beauty. I see beauty. I see this. This one is particularly beautiful. Let's clap for Jesus. Yeah. Beautiful for the house of the Lord. Everyone that is making this place beautiful, the Lord will make your life colorful. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you for cooperating with the man of God and moving this church forward. The church grows from the heart of the pastor, and I can see it in the heart of the pastor. Mama, I should be, you are the wife of daddy. Abi? Uh, hey, I saw that immediately I came in. Let's clap for Jesus. Uh, you know, hallelujah. So this morning I'll be asked to share on increase exceedingly. Praise the Lord. 
Um, my time is very short. In short, this is the shortest time I've had to preach in the in, in U.S. for the past 20 years, 25 minutes, and I usually keep to my time because it's a matter of integrity. Eh? Okay, 30. Okay, so I'll be stopping 25 minutes to 12. Praise the Lord. No, it's ethical. If you don't keep to time, that, that is ministerial, abuse of ministerial ethics. Praise the Lord. So I'll keep to time. And only the short time, God will impart your lives. Please say a loud amen. amen. Amen is a force of agreement in the realm of the spirit. Amen means I agree with what you are saying. And the Bible says, if you shall agree, as touching anything on earth, God will do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you are activating something in the realm of the supernatural when you say amen to a prayer in your direction. I say again, within this short time, God will bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So I'll be sharing uh, on the topic, and um, I will not read the whole of Genesis 30 to 43. That was where I prepared to read because of the exigency of time. But I'd like to submit that greatness, increase, dominion, enlightenment, they are the plans of God for our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have no doubt about it. Let it not pass through your thinking that maybe God does not want me to increase. No. The only one that may not want you to increase is the diminisher, and that is Satan. And because you are born again, your feet is already on the head of Satan. Listen, say, I hear that. I hear that. So if you walk in the, in the reality of the covenant that the Lord entered into with Abraham, which makes you to be blessed as Abraham was blessed, according to Galatians 3, 9, the man on the, uh, on, uh, the, the person in charge of our media has been doing well, the, the rate at which they brought in those things, I think they, I hope they continue. I've just mentioned Galatians 3 9. He says, So he that is that is of Christ, that belongs to Christ, he that is born again, is blessed just as Abraham is blessed. I want you to raise your hand and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. As Abraham is blessed. As Abraham is blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. As Abraham is blessed. As Abraham is blessed. Amen. 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 That's Galatians chapter 3, verse so 9. Then, so then, so then, they wish be of faith and blessed with faithful Abraham. Okay, we won't read like that again because of our time. Amen. I'm just bringing it. Now, in the last verse of that Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, 2, you see. God reinforces again, Galatians 3, 29, that we are blessed, those of us who are in Christ. Galatians 3, 3, 29. All right. Now, what I'm trying to say is that increased greatness, enlightenment, they are all God's intention for our lives. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, it shall be a reality in your life. God did not create any one of us to remain small. Smallness is not the agenda of God for any of us. The Bible says, the poor shall always be in our midst. Poverty is by choice. Let someone say poverty is by choice. Poverty is by choice. When you choose Christ, that means you have chosen that everything that the Lord has created will serve your purpose on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. God, the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. And the Bible says in Psalm 104, verse 24, Psalm 104, verse 24, it says, The Lord in his wisdom, manifold wisdom, has created the heaven and the earth. Amen. And the earth is filled with his riches. Let someone say, The earth is filled with his riches. The earth is filled with his riches. Now, the equation is this if my father owns everything, I cannot lack anything. Now, somebody is hearing me. That's a persuasion. The mentality of abundance, the mentality of multiplication, the mentality of increase must be ingrained in our mentality as children of God. And we must not negotiate it. Amen. Our mentality must be mentality that agrees with what the word of God has said. You cannot think contrary to the word of God and arrive at the destination for your destiny in Christ. Praise the Lord. So our thinking must be reinforced per time by the word of God. That's where I'm going this morning. Our thinking. That's what the Bible says that we should, we should renew our mind. According to Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our transformation is through the renewal of our mind. Because as a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Praise the Lord. 
Proverbs 23, verse 7. If a man thinks poor, he cannot be rich. If a man is thinking rich, it's, a, it's only a matter of time he will become rich. And it's not a matter of circumstances because the covenant is stronger than every economic climate. The covenant works in any nation. So when you have given your life to Christ, according to uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 34, whoever does righteousness in any way is accepted of God and the blessing of the Lord is waiting for that person. So it's not a matter of where you are. It's a matter of what you believe. Let someone say, I hear that. Amen. Amen. Therefore, according to the word of God, I come with this summary because of my time. I'd like you to write it down if you can. That what you behold, that is in the word. Let someone say what you behold. Determines what you believe. What you believe determines how you behave. Determine how you believe. What you behave. How you behave. How you behave. Determines what you become. Determine what you become. I will repeat it two times. If you get it, you get it for life. As far as the word of God is concerned, because this is our meal, this is what we consume in order to produce what is inside of it. The, we read the word of God for the transmission of the spirit of the world into our spirit for manifestation. Not just for mental sake or to get knowledge. No. Every learning that leads only unto knowledge is profitless. That's why one man called Jim Ron told us that don't let your learning lead to knowledge, let your learning lead to action. Can you say that out of me? Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. Lead to knowledge. Let your learning let your learning lead to action. Lead to action. Those who will gravitate in their destiny alive by the word of God are those who hear a word on Sunday and on Monday they go out to put it into action. Why? Because whatever you postpone, you cannot appropriate. Many Christians read scripture. Scripture does not reflect in their life. They hear, for example, that forgive those who offend you. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. So that your Father in heaven will forgive you. They still keep malice. Such Christians can't grow. They may be counting years in the church. It doesn't matter. Those who will grow in the world and who will grow and be enlarged by the world are those who hear the word and they run with the word. There are about five things you should do with the word of God. You read the word, you repeat the word, meditation, you respect the word, you run with the word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It works. So that statement, I'll make it again. It's my summary of all I want to bring this morning. What? Don't worry, just listen to me. Don't listen to that other one. Hallelujah. So I say again, what you behold, say after me, what you behold. What you behold. The time is what you believe. The time is what you believe. What you believe. What you believe. The time is how you behave. How you behave. How you behave. How you behave. The time is what you become. The time is what you become. Say it one more time. If you get that only and I pray, I'm, I'll be good to go back to Nigeria. Say it after me again. What you behold. What you behold. That is in the world. What, what you behold. What you behold. The time is how, uh, <laughs> what you believe. The time is what you believe. What you believe. What, what you, you believe. believe. The time is how you behave. The time is how you behave. How you behave. How you behave. The time is what you become. The time is what you become. Now, how do we bring that to prosperity, to enlargement? It is by hearing the word. And through the word, having a picture of what your destiny is in Christ, because the Bible is a book of pictures. God took Abraham out in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. He says, see, as far as your eyes can see, God has spoken in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, that it will be a blessing, it will be great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But until Abraham saw it in the eyes of the spirit, by the revelation, and he caught the vision, he never became. And of course, he took action. The role of obedience. So God declared the promise, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15, he saw what God said. Because that's another thing. Until you see what God has said, you cannot get what God has given. I repeat, until you see what God has said, you cannot get what God has given. So Abraham needed to see. So in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15, he saw... And a large territory. And then in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5, Genesis chapter 15 verse 5, he also took him out in the night and showed him the stars. You remember the story? He said, as many stars as you can see represent the number of your descendants. And they were so uncountable. Praise the Lord. 
So the picture of enlargement was painted to him. He saw it. And the picture of, of, of increased descendant was also painted to him. So he carried in his mentality from time to time as his name was changed from Abraham to Abraham, father of nations, praise the Lord. He carried in himself the mentality of a father of multitude. Let someone say, I hear that. I hear that. And everywhere he went, whenever they call him Abraham, he's like attending, saying to them, you are calling the father of multitude. Somebody here, you are giving birth to greatness and likeness amen. in the name of amen. Jesus. Amen. Say it louder, amen. 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 So you need the picture. Now Jacob is this, our team. The prosperity of Jacob in Genesis chapter 30, particularly verse 43, our team, is a reflection of what he got from Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25 from verse 29 to 34, they are about, that was where he bought his future. He saw the future and bought it because somebody was ready to sell his future. You not sell your future. Amen. It was a covenant transaction, a spiritual transaction in Genesis 25. When Esau was careless to release his birthright. Now, birthright is the foundation for prosperity at that time. Praise the Lord. The covenant Amen. birthright. It was the first one. All the inheritance that Isaac would give was principally for the first son. You know, there is uh, a Iran Delta area of eastern Nigeria around Inewe side, all those areas, when a father has children, attention of the father is given to the first child. Amen? The rest of the brothers, they say from the same womb, they are like cousins. When the father dies, everything becomes the, I'm a cousin to the ownership of, um, of um, who? Of the first son. And that was exactly what happened in Genesis chapter 25, verse 1. Genesis 25, verse 1. After Abraham died, everything had became that of of Isaac. Amen. But what I'm saying is that the genesis of what we find in Genesis chapter 30 verse 30 to 43 started from Genesis chapter 25. When you get to Genesis chapter 27, what was on display was the outside outward manifestation of what has already happened. There is no way Esau could get the blessing of the birth of the firstborn in Genesis 27, because he lost it in Genesis 25. You cannot predicate something or nothing. Praise the Lord. So, whether the mother intervened or not, in what happened in Genesis 27 that made, him to, that made the woman to say, go and look for meat, cook for your dad, etc., et whether she intervened or not, the destiny was already lost and settled in Genesis 25. So, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 30, Jacob, who had been laboring for Laban for a long time, came to this conclusion and screamed out. He said, when shall I also begin to provide for my household? Genesis 30, 30. Until a man is angry or poverty, he cannot encounter prosperity. Look at me here. What did I say? Until a man is angry at poverty, he cannot encounter prosperity. The anger of Jacob was manifested in Genesis chapter 30, verse 30? It's a great question. People are asking question, why? Never move forward in life. It is only those who are asking the question, what? Praise the Lord. What shall I do? When shall, I, shall it happen? Where shall I go? The question is not always why. Don't ask why. Ask what? Praise the Lord. He said, when shall I also begin to provide for my family? And then an idea came from heaven. I pray the idea for your transformation will come very quickly. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The trouble with many believers is that we pray, we read the Bible, we become so religious and we get stuck somewhere in life. Rather than taking action and asking questions, what God, what God expects us to do, we are calling on God to do it. It will never happen that way. From today, you ask yourself the right question in Jesus' name. Those who are mature in Christ, those who take hold of their destiny in Christ, are the people who are asking God in prayer. They pray revelational prayers. God, show me in the way. Show me the way out of this challenge. God, what shall I do? God, where shall I go? Because he has given a promise in Psalm 32, verse 8, Psalm 32, verse 8. He said, I will show you, I will guide you the way to go, and I will show, I mean, I, I will guide you the way you shall go. I will follow you with my eyes upon you. Praise the Lord. 
And Psalm 25, verse 14, Psalm 25, verse 14, 14 he, he said, the, the, the covenant of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Praise the Lord. Those who fear him, he will show them his covenant. May the Lord show you his covenant. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'll close by mentioning five levels of understanding that we need to encounter greatness and increase this exceeding increase. Five levels of understanding. Number one. Let someone say number one. You need an understanding that it is the will of God for you to prosper. Write it down. Time is short. It is the will of God for you to prosper. And that is where I started. Hallelujah. It is the will. Don't ever believe anything to the contrary. Amen. That's level one understanding. It's will to prosper. He wills that you prosper. Hallelujah. Number two is an understanding that God is the source of all wealth. Let's not say God is the source of all wealth. For that number one understanding that is God's will for you to prosper, third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. And then Psalm 35, verse 27. Psalm 35, verse 27. That's understanding that God is God's will for you to prosper. In Psalm 35, verse 27, particularly verse B, it says, the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. Let somebody say, the Lord delights, the Lord delights in my prosperity. In my prosperity. Okay, let's read it that way. The Lord wants me. The Lord wants me. The Lord is happy. The Lord is happy. When I prosper. When I prosper. Every child of God listen to me. When you are in pain, God is pained. Mm. That's the reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross. So that he will exchange our poverty with his prosperity. You were saying that troubles with his peace. Praise the Lord. It is God's will that you prosper. In Job 36, 11, Job 36, 11, he said, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in what? In play. Our problem is obedience. Obedience. I define obedience, I say obedience is the foolishness of the wise and disobedience is the wisdom of the fool. Is somebody hearing me this morning? What does that mean? When you are Obeying the word of God, you look foolish to the word. And that's when you are doing the right thing, as a man. Amen? But when you disobey, you look wise to the word. But to God, you are unwise. That's why I said it. Obedience is the foolishness of the wise. Pay your tithe, it looks foolish. It's argued. They argue in the Bible. They say it's uh, under law. They, tithe did not come under law. Because Abraham started tithe in Genesis chapter 14. Praise the Lord. And Abraham was not under the law. Jacob was not under the law. He made commitment to tithing in his false encounter with the Lord at Bethel in Genesis chapter 28. So it's a covenant practice. Amen. And he said he gave tithing tithes to Melchizedek the king and the priest. And in Psalm 110 verse 4, Psalm 110 verse 4, he said prophetically that Jesus Christ will become our high priest, eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So that those who are wise, as Abraham placed tight in the hand of King Mercedes, the high priest, so we place it in the hand of Jesus when we give it, and what did he receive? He received a, a spiritual recompense, in which is a form of communion. He gave him bread and wine. After he gave him tithe, praise the Lord. So every time we bring tithe, we are connecting to the intangible blessings of the covenant. Let's all say, I hear that. And when you pay your tithe faithfully, for seven years, God pay, pays you a financial visit. I've been there. After another seven years, consistently, God pays you another visit. Financially. After another year, seven years, God pays you. Step by step, you grow with him. Those who, are, who remain at the same level, sir, is because they are not working on the covenant platform. They are not working by inside because every increase in the covenant is a function of an inside. For example, people like me, by an inside, I... I, I moved forward in life some years ago and I said, it's not possible for me to give the same offering I'm giving this year as last year. It's not possible. If my offering was 5,000 last year, this year it increases to 7,000 or 6,000. And I follow that throughout the year. Next year, I move to the next level and I follow it through the year. 
You know what some of us do, some Christians do? Anything they find in their pocket on Sunday morning is what they bring. You are not working the covenant. You strike a deal with your maker. When you take a step forward, God says, this my son, this my daughter is, is moving forward. You begin to ask me to your journey. You will not stay at the same spot again in Jesus' name. Amen. Every person that rationalizes with this ordinary medulla umblogata remains at the same level. Every analysis of the word of God with our, with our brain always leads to faith paralysis. That's not God. Amen? Amen? Those who are walking in the realm of the spirit don't do what natural men do. Praise the Lord. That's how they get the benefit of the supernatural. Amen? Amen. So God, it is God's will that you prosper, that you increase. It was upon Jacob. And when he got to the time that the answer will come, breakthrough came because an idea came. And that is the profit of Titan 2. Three blessings of Titan in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 8 to 10. Ask me what are the three benefits. Write them down. Ideas, favors, and opportunities. Let's not say ideas. Let's not say favors. Let's not say opportunities. Those are three benefits of consistently Titan. I was talking of offering. Some people's offering have assumed the title of Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. That's the offering. The offering they were giving to their children three years ago is still the same amount they are dropping in the hand of that child. Last year is the same amount they are still giving to the child every Sunday this year. You can't move forward that way. Remember what I've said. Every increase the function of an insight. Every year, I'm 65 this year. Every year from the time I turn 50, my offering is 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 tied around my age per year last year my offering on of my birthday was 60, 64 thousand because i was 64 years old this year because my wife was 60 and in january he gave uh she gave uh, 100 dollars in nigeria that was about uh, 120 thousand that time i said this woman is overtaking me i will, I will not allow it so my offering, my birthday offering, Thanksgiving offering at 65 was 200,000. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm moving forward from there next year when I turn 66 in Jesus' name. Let's not say I hear, I hear that. So there are certain things that happen. You begin to say, God does not just, it's not just favoring some people. Ask what they do. I told people in the Gethsemane Sanctuary, I said, I, I, I've been coming regularly to U.S. said for the year of COVID, two years, 2020 and 2021. I've not bought my ticket for my church has never bought the ticket for me. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. When you are walking the covenant, the whole world becomes the jurisdiction of your blessing. Clap for Jesus in the house. My time is short today. Hallelujah. But you will have picked something. Stay with God, Titan. Walk in the covenant. Take a step. Shut a path of covenant practice for yourself. Ministering to the poor along the side, according to... Uh, no, according to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, it says, he that, he that gives to the poor will not lack. And Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, it says, He that gives to the poor, he lends to the Lord, and the Lord will give him back. And the interest of the of kingdom is more than the interest of any bank on earth. And Proverbs chapter 21, 13, Proverbs 21, 13, it says, He that shut his ears to the, to the poor, he also will cry no one the answer, him, including God, because God is bound by his word. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. So, so I'm just trying to because this this time I I, I finish now. You, you see because what we find in this by the, I believe in supernatural prosperity. I preach the prosperity message. There is no poverty message in the Bible. But you know what? Kingdom prosperity is responsibility. Let me hear you say so. Kingdom, Kingdom prosperity, prosperity is, is responsibility. responsibility. So I even though it is God's will for you to prosper. The next thing you ask is, my, my father, my father, what is my responsibility? Mm. I mentioned tithe now. I mentioned offering. I mentioned ministering to the poor. Yeah. I've just had one ministering to your parents if they are still alive. Exodus 20, 12. He said, you must honor your parents. Not just kneeling down or prostrating. Amen? From time to time, you minister to them. And the result is in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. He said, the, the commandment to honor your parents is the only one that carried the promise of a blessing in the Bible out of the Ten Commandments. For your days on the earth shall be prolonged. When my mother was alive, I used to give her money from time to time. There was a time I visited there in the village. And the night I arrived. And I gave my mother, I think it was 2,000. And my mom opened her mouth and began to to thank God and to pray for me. 
you know what happened? He said two weeks ago, I bought a basket of cola nut, because he used to sell cola nut, and I on credit, and I told the woman to come tomorrow to collect her money. He said, now this time you have brought money. The prayer of my mother is still working on my life till tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't be giving mattresses out in the city and your mother is sleeping on mats in the village. Yeah. It's absurd. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll round up now. I know there will be some other time in the future. Praise you didn't you didn't say amen. Amen. Are you blessed already? Yes, sir. Have you had something this yes, morning? Lord. Is there something new you begin to do yes, now? Lord. Your consistency in working the covenant determines the level God is taking you to. Yeah. Let me say this finally. After you are born again, the length and breadth, the size of your prosperity is determined by you and no, by, no longer by God. Write it down. That's not blasphemy. That is the true word of God. Amen. That's a distill from several scriptures together. Why? Ask me why. Why? Ask me why. Why? Romans 8 32. Romans 8 32. He said, if the Lord did not withhold his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, and gave him to us, he said, how, how, how much more shall he together with him give us freely? Let's not say freely. Really? All things. How many things? All, All things. things. If you receive Jesus, that's the best of God. Every other thing is lesser than Jesus. Give Jesus a big hand in the house. So God is not withholding Hallelujah. anything. It's now unto you according to your faith. Matthew 9, 29. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the size of your blessing is determined by you. That's why we need to understand kingdom prosperity, like I said, is responsibility. Or responsibility of honoring God. What is tight for me, tight is acknowledgement of God as your source. That is what tight is. He is not any big deal. Amen. There, there was an American that told God when he started his business, he said, God, I will be sorting you to give you 10%. He said, let's make a deal. He started his business with five, $500, $500 in this country. Amen. And then he said, God, I'll be giving you 90%. I will take 10%. In five years, let's not say five years. Five years. The business has grown to 500 million. Mm. I'm not talking for in, in America here. In America. Praise the Lord. So in a meeting that uh, 17,000 people were, were doing at that time, there was, I think, Billy Graham's meeting. He wanted to give an offering. The man said, give me permission. See, all of you, 17,000 people, whatever amount you give, my family will give it. Or my family will double it. And everybody, because they wanted to make the man, you will see trouble today. 70,000 people, they gave $3.5 million offering at the spot. And the man took the mic to tell the 70,000 people, he said, is that all you can do? Clap for Jesus. Amen. Your prosperity will confound the world. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let me end by saying that it all begins by divine connectivity. Let's all say divine connectivity. Divine connectivity. The question is, are you connected to God? Are you born again? That's where it begins. That's where it begins. When you are born again, you become spirit. You rise above the level of the natural. You begin to see the intangible, I mean, the, 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 the invisible in order to touch the tangible. Because prosperity is a matter of inner assignment first, in our job first. Until you become it, you cannot behave it. We said it before. Let's bow down our heads. Maybe you are there this morning. You are coming to trouble, but you are not yet born again. That's where it begins. As a man. You need to be born again. God will not negotiate that. Because when you become born again, you take the nature of God and everything answers to God. Nothing refuses Jesus. And whatever God is, everything is there. So if you are struggling, it's because you are not connected to the divine yet. Remember what I said, when you become a child of God and you are working in the covenant, your wealth, the jurisdiction for your wealth is worldwide. You become unlimited. And whatever God is that you are, everything is there. You will not be running a task ever. Before I pray, you want to surrender your life to Jesus this morning. That's about that here. Just raise your hand to Jesus where you are seated. To begin a new journey with him. To talk to him and we talk to you and you hear him when he gives instruction. Because the instruction you obey today determines the future you create for yourself. Obedience took Abraham into enlightenment. God is waiting for your obedience. But how can you obey if you cannot hear him to give you instruction? 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise on your feet quickly and place your heart, hand where your heart is beating and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come this morning. I've heard your word. I've been challenged. I know there's a step to take now. I'm coming back to you as my maker. If there be anything that is standing between me and you, whether it's disobedience or sin, please forgive me. So that, Father, my heart can be open to you and you will come in. And when you come in, you will instruct me. And when I obey instructions, my enlightenment will be unstoppable. Have mercy on me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And prosper me. The way you prosper, Jacob. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning for the few words we've shared in the last 30 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. We are praying and believing you that that which your children have picked up as they work on it, as they determine to work on it, greater than what Jacob saw, they will see in Jesus' name. Amen. Greater than what Jacob touched. Yes, Lord. They will touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Greater than what Jacob accomplished. Yes, Lord. They will accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for everybody under my voice. Yes, Lord. That as you obey this word of God, this time next year, you'll be at a higher level. Amen. This time next year, you'll be at a level that will dumbfound your enemies. Amen. This time next year, you'll be at a level that you yourself cannot imagine. Amen. Amen. God will ask me to your journey. Amen. He will raise men and women who will be your helpers, who will be on tiny helpers in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this strange land, people will hear of your glory. Amen. Amen. According to Genesis chapter 45, Joseph told his brother, tell my father in Canaan to come and see my glory in Egypt. People in Nigeria or from whatever country you have come from, they will hear of your glory. Amen. You know, return empty handed. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And whatever is fighting or contending with your glory and your destiny today, I speak from these exalted people to the Almighty God. Let them be crushed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your testimony shall be unstoppable. Amen. Your testimony in this land shall become the prayer point for other Amen. people. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Amen. The name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, Daddy. Praise the Lord. I, I want us to stretch for our hands unto our Daddy, and I want us to begin to pray that Lord replenish him. Lord, refill him. Lord, re-energize him. Lord, re-empower him, O oh Lord. All that has gone out of him, O oh Lord, in abundance, O oh Lord, that he let there be refilled. That he recharge him, re-anoint him, O oh Lord. All that he has said, O oh Lord, that he, I pray, water it, O oh Lord, and let it produce fruit. In our life and in his life and his home, in the name of Jesus. Let all that I have said never walk against him. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we give you the glory for the word that we had. And we pray, O oh Lord, for the vessel you have used. That you will refill. You will re-energize. And you will prolong his usefulness in the name of Jesus. You will promote his usefulness in the name of Jesus.